This is EA Sports, PGA Tour coverage coming your way. And hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside Frank Navalo. We are at Oakmont Country Club in western Pennsylvania. Frank, the site of so many historic moments. Great players have made their mark here. Sam Snead, Ben Hogan, Jack Nicklaus, Ernie Els, a long and distinguished list. Oakmont, if it's not the most difficult golf course in North America, Rich, it's certainly one of the most difficult golf courses. With its 210 bunkers, I'm really personified by the church pews, the hard and slick greens that slope away from the player and the tight fairways. This golf course always requires the utmost precision. Really good distance control there, playing well to his strengths. Really not much to this. The only issue would be a lack of concentration or focus. One under early in the round. Relatively short par four, second hole. Frank, what's the right play off the tee here? It's probably not driver. It certainly isn't. Um, you need a decent yardage in for your second shot, so you don't really want to hit it past those last of the six bunkers on that right side. You know, at least a shot of 100, 110 yards. There's another tee box a little further up where they can make it like drivable at 265 yards, but for such a short hole, this is sort of a fearsome one. You always feel like you're making a mistake when you're putting the ball on the tee. So on the putting surface and taking a good look now at this birdie putt here at the second. Frank going for another birdie here. Just to get on a real roll. Frank couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, just the lie there, too. It is sitting up like it's teed up. Not a gimme, but well within his range. So with that, the score is now at even par. So here we are at the third hole, par four, again, 428 yards. Frank, have you ever seen anything quite like the bunkering that we have here on the left side of this hole? No, the church pews, they're famous, obviously, for Oakmont, and they have that tendency to drag your eye to that left side. Uh, Really, you hit anything that you can get off the, uh, on the fairway off this tee, whether it's a long... Look out, that ball's OB, and that'll be a one-shot penalty. Third shot now after having gone OB. And it looks like it's in the rough there, Frank. Well, it might not be as bad as it looks. Has 80 yards left. Just a bit offline. Yeah, the hard work's coming up now, though. That's a long way away. Pretty long putt right here. You'd be happy to get it to within two, three feet. Frank, I thought that was in. Speed wasn't bad on that long putt, but the read wasn't very good. 12 feet still to go. Good stroke, just came up empty. A disastrous triple bogey attempt here. That hole certainly got the best of him. Triple bogey. Frank, at Oakmont, you have to take advantage of scoring opportunities when they present themselves. Is this one of those moments here, the par five, fourth hole at 609 yards? It'll certainly be one of the holes that determine the champion uh, because the difference between making four and six on this hole is extremely slim. Very, very stringent tee shot. You're heading towards those church pews and trying to cut the ball away from it. It's easy to see why Jack Nicholas, who faded the ball, and Ben Hogan won around here. Here's to be what they call a commercial play. Very solid. It just came out blazing. As soon as it hit the green, it was never going to stop. And setting up here in the rough.
chance for birdie after that beautiful shot. Locked in on the read and the speed. Well, he knew it right from the start. Just a poor putt. So just a formality here. Three over for the day. And now the fifth hole, short but challenging par for 382 yards, and it obviously rewards precision off the tee, heavily bunkered along the way. Now this is not hitting in the right direction. Well, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. Long drive, but a bad lie. Uh, wicked. Oh, it looked like he caught a flyer right there, Frank. Well, I don't know what he caught, but this is way too much. Wow, lucky break right there, Frank. Well, that's what everyone else is going to say, except him. Can't booty them all, Rich. And drops it in. And now to the par 36th here at Oakmont, measuring in at just under 200 yards. Par 36th here at Oakmont. Frank, it's changed a bit since you played here in the U.S. Open back in 1994. Yes, it has, Rich. Uh, they used to have a bunker behind the screen, uh, sort of back left. They removed that now and actually increased the back of this green. I'm not going to say it makes the hole that much easier. It just gives them uh, a few more places to cut a flag uh, when they choose to stick it in the back. A solid rich. This one safely on. That had to really hurt Frank because it looked good all the way. Well, this will test his middle. Just a little sloppy right now. No other way to say it. Another bogey and four over for the day. All set here at the par 4-7. Frank, what do players need to look out for off the tee? It's a rather uh, intimidating tee shot there since the trees have all been removed uh, that are, used to be very, very close to this fairway. Three bunkers down the right side, another two on the left. Um, they've either got to be uh, somehow threaded in between or the longest hitters might just be able to squeeze it past. Can't ask for much more here at the seventh. He has hit a good one. Setting up for an approach shot here. Wins still a challenge out there, and they've thrown him off all day long. Let's see if he can find some comfort level here before the end of the round. So the second of the par four goes begging, and now I'll have to rely on the short game. Yeah, but a short game, as we all know, can uh, redeem a lot of mistakes. Let's see if he does it here. So getting set for a greenside bunker shot. Frank, when I think of the great bunker players in the history of the sport, I think about Gary Player, Seve Ballesteros, who you knew so well. What did they do that made them so effective on these greenside bunker shots? They had an attitude for a start that was different. For them, it was, they saw possibilities. And uh, they, they would imagine the amount of sand. Remember, because this is the only shot in golf where you don't have to hit the ball first. So they would really choose the amount of sand behind the ball, whether that was an inch or two. Aim the club at that and made sure they followed through. My goodness, I was looking over there toward the green, and I, I'm having to find it over here. Well, I mean, it was hit solid, but this is, uh, this is not even close. Well, this is always one of the toughest moments in any round. You've made a mistake, you hit it OB, you're disappointed, but you have to regroup, you have to focus, and try to get this next one in play. Eight's too many in this situation. What was he thinking there? I have no earthly idea. Oh, solid strike right in the heart of the green. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. Settles in over the putt. You can't leave it short, Frank. Oh, and especially right in the middle. Just a little tap in here. Well, you almost lose count at this point. Safe to say, not under par. In fact, well over par. Oh, 
beautiful swing, and the result is every bit as good. Outstanding tee shot. Yeah, ball sitting up. You don't have to worry about the wind or anything there. You just take a full-blooded cut at the second shot from here. Mark a birdie on the card. Frank, the nice thing about...